My name is Rudyan Griffiths. I came to work in the library in 1980 and I worked here for 28 years. I was interested in what happened in relation to the cave, so I read up about it. It actually starts in the First World War. The British Museum asked the National Library of Wales could they store some of the more valuable items from the collections, which they did. But 20 years later, when there was the threat of war in Europe again, that was remembered and uh, the British Museum wrote to the library and asked, well, would you extend us the same courtesy this time round? And by the 1930s as well, people had realised that warfare would be much more severe and the threat to the collections, particularly in London, was huge. Arrangements were made to store things here, but in 1937 the library itself had begun to think about its own treasures and their safety in the event of war. The library's vice president, who was an engineer, suggested what about building a store underground, somewhere on library land, but somewhere in rock where it was fairly safe and fairly bombproof. In 1938, work began on building the underground tunnel and then the British Museum heard about it and they said, well, could we use that as well? And the agreement eventually was that the library and the British Museum would pay half and half for the building of the, the tunnel and for the maintenance costs. So when the, the tunnel was eventually occupied in the summer of 1940, half the storage space was given over to the library and half to the British Museum. The library building was jam-packed with stuff from London collections. The National Gallery sent several hundred canvases here. They also stored books here. The British Museum, some large collections from there, but also from a number of other organisations in London, the Asiatic Society, the Royal Geographical Society, University College London. What the library here did was to give over as much space as possible. So the reading rooms weren't open to readers for the duration of the war, except people with special permits where they could be accommodated individually. The first trains arrived in Aberystwyth at the end of August 1939. According to the librarian at the time, the library looked rather like a furniture repository, a big warehouse really full, full of collections. For security reasons, there weren't very detailed lists. Lists might fall into the wrong hands. So the curators were aware what was stored there, but what was kept in the cave was the most valuable items. A lot of valuable items came from London. Manuscripts of Shakespeare, manuscripts of Chaucer, manuscripts of Wycliffe, very early Greek and Hebrew manuscripts from New Testament times. There was a copy of Magna Carta. After the war, it was said, well, all these things were stored there. But during the war, of course, nothing was, was named publicly. There's a persistent rumour that the crown jewels were stored there, but I personally doubt that. But who knows? In 2009, the library was host to a travelling exhibition of drawings by Leonardo da Vinci, which are in the Royal Collection at Windsor. And um, we found out, quite by chance, from the records at Windsor that these very drawings had been stored at the library during the war. It's a quite wonderful thing really that everything was preserved, everything was kept safe and it's a tribute to the people who had to work so hard for five years just to ensure that everything was preserved.